Hi, everybody. Welcome to PAX Online, and welcome to our panel here with the crew from DualShockers.com. I am Logan Moore, the managing editor at DualShockers, and today we are going to talk about Persona 6, a game that is not announced yet, but a game that will surely be coming in the future uh, that we have some ideas about. Uh, so joining us on our panel today is our staff from DualShockers.com as well. Going down the list here, we've got in the Joker mask from Persona 5, the, from the Persona 5 Royal Special Edition or Limited Edition, Collector's Edition, whatever. Uh, Scott White is here. Scott, how's it going? Doing well, doing well. And don't you mean Persona 5 Royale? Is yeah. <laughs> That's an inside joke that uh, some commenters will get over at Dual Shockers. We've Man. also got uh, Ryan Meitzler is with us as well. Ryan, how are you doing? Looking cool, Joker. Wow, there you go. Is it, <laughs> pop? it is the fun Joker uh, Funko Pop. So. You're degenerate. Like uh, uh, <laughs> Nick Blaine is here with us as well, recording all this. Nick, how's it going? You never saw it coming, let me tell you. <laughs> somebody had to make that joke in the opening. I, I, I'm glad somebody it was did. There. I had to go for it, you know? Uh, the master of, and then our two Persona masters, probably, we've saved for last. Alyssa James is here as well, who uh, reviewed Persona 5 Royal for us earlier this year. Alyssa, how are you doing? Doing good, thanks. How's, um, yeah, how's everyone doing here? <laughs> I'm not doing too bad. Ian is here as well. Ian Agosa is with us, who also is the master of all things Persona. Ian, how are you doing? Uh, hi everyone, it's Ian, new editor of the Cast. The guys are just writing about Japanese games no one cares about. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, again, this panel is going to look at, as I said at the top, uh, we're going to be talking about Persona the whole time. Uh, and the title of this panel is pretty self-explanatory, what we want to see in Persona 6. As I said, this is a game that Atlas has not announced yet. But it is a game that, uh, given the success of Persona 5, surely will be announced at some point. Uh, before we get into talking too much, though, about what we would like to see in a future installment in the Persona series, though, uh, I want to give a—I want to get each, a brief rundown from each of you about your familiarity with the series, uh, where you're, how again, just what all games you've played. I mean, we are on six mainline installments, I guess technically, if we're counting the two twos. Uh, yeah. in the franchise. Uh, how many of them each have you guys played and all that? We can go around the table again. I guess I'll start, though. I'm probably the newest Persona convert here amongst this panel. Uh, I've played about a third of Persona 4, and I need to go back to it, honestly. And then uh, Persona 5 is something I've known that I would love for years and years and years. And then it got to the point where Royal was announced, and I was like, okay, I just need to not play 5 now and hold out for Royal. And so I've been slowly inching my way through five this year and uh, definitely one of my favorite games I've played in quite some time. So I'm definitely the persona novice here amongst this crew, but uh, I love the series and I'm like totally dedicated. I'm going to load up my PlayStation Vita and go back and visit uh, <laughs> all of the old ones, I think. It's yes. some point in time, whenever I get some time. Uh, Scott, how familiar are you with this series and how many of them have you played? Uh, I'm pretty familiar with it. I got my start playing, renting Persona 2 Eternal Punishment uh, for PlayStation 1 back in the day. I've played and own all of them, um, but I've actually only beaten Persona 1 and Persona 5 and 5 Royal. So I actually haven't beaten the two duology yet, three or four. So Interesting. Ryan, what about yourself? I know you've been playing through Royal lately as well. Yeah, I think like like I'm more of a recent convert to Persona. Uh, I first got into the series four years ago with Persona 4 Golden on Vita because that was a game that like seemingly everyone was saying like you need to play this if you have a Vita. So I picked it up for ten dollars in a PSN sale just as like a, a to try it and see if I would like it, and I could not get enough of it. So I played I played that. I played uh, Persona 3 Portable last year. And uh, I'm playing Persona 5 Royal right now. Uh, I'm in the new semester, so I should be finishing it within the next couple weeks because I've been meaning to play that game for a long time. Okay. Nick, you're rocking the Persona 5 shirt, I think. <laughs> Man, or... Persona 5, yeah. It's a, it's a kind of funny collaboration Persona shirt. I had to wear it to represent. But, yes, Persona 5 <laughs> is my second favorite game of all time underneath of course kingdom hearts 2 uh but <laughs> yes i i got started similar to ryan where i heard all the buzz about persona 4 golden on the vita back in the day and i bought it and i skipped a couple of classes in college 
uh, just to <laughs> to finish my high school career in Persona Four. <laughs> <laughs> But, Alyssa, yeah, I, I know you are the most familiar with not only Persona, but the series it's tangentially tied to with Shin Megami Tensei. Mm-hmm. So you are probably yeah. have more knowledge about <laughs> all of this than maybe any <laughs> of us here, other than Ian, potentially. But uh, yeah, what's your what's your familiarity level with the series? Okay, so I actually started uh, with Persona 3 in college. And it's a little shameful, but the sole reason I played it was because I love the idea of teenagers summoning like demons by shooting themselves in the head. And it was just, (laughs) so I just just, like picked it up on a whim, like on a mall trip, fell in love with it. So it was unlike any other RPG I ever played in my life. And then I just quickly started uh, playing any other Persona game I could. So, you know, Persona 1, both Persona 2s. I ended up, of course, playing Persona 4, 5. Uh, and then I got into, the, of course, the mainline series as well. So, yeah, ever since then, just addicted. Ian, what about yourself? Uh, as for me, well, uh, you know, I always been to anime and Japanese stuff. So when Persona 3 released in France, I was pretty hyped about it. But I actually didn't own a PS2. Like, I, I owned one, but I... We lend it to one of our cousins, and then we never got it back, like typical story in African Asian households. So oh. yeah, uh, <laughs> I really wanted to play the game. So when Persona 4 got out, I still didn't have a PS2, so I actually played it like years later. I think it was in 2011 or something, and I, I emulated it. And I played it on, on, on my PC one summer. I really liked it. Uh, so I was super hyped for Persona 5 when it released. And um, now basically Persona 5 is my favorite. I really like the story and I'm not gonna spoil stuff, but I, I really like the teams and stuff in Persona 5. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So it seems like, I mean, I, I don't think this is too uncommon, especially for people who are Persona fans nowadays, but most of us seem like we have gotten in with the franchise somewhere between three, four and five. Uh, yeah. which is again that's totally normal because one two and two two are pretty uh they're, they're popular in their own right but they are a little bit different from what three they're much off closer to the mainline yeah. smt yeah style yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. and i guess i guess before we get into the larger discussion about uh persona 6 as a whole and again what we want to see there i mean i think it's important right now to talk about kind of where the series is at because again we've mentioned that Persona has blown up the past few years, largely thanks to Persona 5. Uh, Again, the other entries were popular in their own right, but Persona 5 really made the game more popular in the West than it ever has been before. So we're we're at the height of Persona hype, but simultaneously, Atlas is also kind of working on reintegrating Shin Megami Tensei in more of a mainline fashion. Uh, So it's been interesting to see how these two series are going to be living more congruently uh, across one another in the future. Uh, Mm -hmm. And they always have been, but again, Persona, it's, I mean, it's kind of a jokes and memes amongst the community that Persona fans aren't aware of what Shin Megami Tensei is, and they don't actually know the differences between the two, or uh, they're not aware of, they think they're two separate entities when they're, I mean, they are, but they aren't at the same time. All right, so yeah, Persona 6, again, something we don't know about, but something that will surely be coming given the franchise's popularity. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that we could obviously want in a future installment, and I'm sure we've all come with plenty of our own ideas here. Uh, but I think it's first important to kind of talk about the main things that the franchise has uh, tied to it, the things like, you know, social links and the day cycle, going to school and things like that. There are these pillars of the Persona franchise that have always been there in all of the entries um, in some way, shape, or form. I guess in a general sense, is that something that you guys want to see returning in future installments or in a Persona 6? Is that something you would like to see them continue with? Or would you like to see them shake up that generalized formula a little bit more? Nick, you look uh, like you want to say something. Yeah, I was like, I'm just, you know what, I'm going to come, I'm going to come in. I, I kind <laughs> of, the one thing I really think that they could do, like get tackle a little bit more difficult subjects with is by going like the college route because it's traditionally been high school at least from what i've seen yeah um to kind of uh, tackle the the bigger issues and of course like the the kind of as the controversy controversy from uh persona 5 like the kind of not 
anti-gay, but also like not not tackling that subject a little bit more. You know, like ha- have you have you be able to um, you know go into different confidants and be like, all right, I really like you. We're we're dating, like or whatever. You know, like the yeah. the, the mm-hmm. like uh, people stand like Ryuji and Yusuke from Five. You know, I think that that would be something really cool just to open it up you know to so many other people yeah. to see themselves in it you know yeah no, i completely agree um in in terms of uh the the social links and uh confidants um honestly at this point i would love to see them develop like a brand new social system mm. altogether because i feel like confidants as much as i enjoyed him in persona 5 i feel like it really showed that that's as far as you can really push them you know like there's really nothing new or exciting that can be done with that same system um and and i want them to keep the social aspect because that's like the single most important defining trait of the persona series but i feel like it'd be a good idea if they could figure out a way create like kind of a brand new mechanic altogether that functions differently so it feels fresh and new versus just us getting kind of like another social link you know same thing called but called something different and then more integrated in the plot i think would be a big Mm -hmm. thing because i think that's a big problem too with them which is why they feel kind of stagnant is that you know when you have this character development going on in these social links are confidants which are great but then you don't really see that reflected in the main story i think that's kind of a problem especially now we have hardware where we could do that so i would love to see if we have a social system that really integrates all that development in the story and you see the character's mainline plot actually growing alongside you know you actually uh, dealing with them on the side yeah i mean to jump in i i think this was one of the big broad ideas that i had for a future installment is to introduce more of the relationships and uh, even the larger team that you assemble with like earlier in the story because Mm -hmm. i i I don't think it's a a problem with four or three four or five uh that they kind of give you drip feed of new relationships and new characters coming in and i think that kind Mm -hmm. of keeps the carrot on the stick with you wanting to continue playing and continue to meet new people. Uh, But I think if they introduced more relationships up front or more characters to interact with up front, and then your relationship could develop over the course of the entire game. Because again, like in in vanilla P5 specifically, like what people like, who are some of the late game people you get in that game, like Haru and stuff like that. Like Mm -hmm. you don't get to develop relationships Mm -hmm. as much with them because they just arrive so late in the story. Exactly. Uh, So yeah, I feel like if they introduced some of the social links and confidants a bit earlier and then just let you grow on them from from there uh i think that would be good I, I don't know again i think the current system is also great because it makes you want want to continue pushing along so that you do meet more people so mm-hmm. maybe they could find a way to still keep that incentive alive while also letting you kind of from the outset i don't know dump more on you at the beginning of the game rather than yeah, slowly rolling yeah. it out over the course of 50 hours uh, and i know that exactly. would be a very gaudy opening 10 hours i'm sure but yeah. uh i think that's one thing that they could do to potentially mix up the formula a little bit um, right i would like so especially... to see uh go, go ahead. ahead i was just gonna uh, comment and say well especially with Persona 5 kind of being the Final Fantasy 7 of the franchise where people are coming in and kind of can understand it like, like to be able to make Persona 6 a little bit more out there a little bit more like like cha- not challenging stuff but uh taking taking stuff and like working with it you know and 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 trying to update it and to be able to um get the social links a little bit more improved and the activity is a little bit more you know out there and throwing more at you because atlas now knows oh you played persona 5 you understand what persona is here you go like there's not a lot of people yeah. that are going to be jumping in i agree yeah mm-hmm. uh, i think a cool avenue that they could explore and kind of evolve the confidant system is kind of connect the confidants together so it doesn't feel like all these individual tendrils that have no impact on any of the others. Like 
say yeah. if you level up these two confidants, maybe you'll take them both out or you'll go out and hang out with both of them. And because you have X rank in both, that might unlock a special ability because those two have become friends and kind of expand that way. Mm -hmm. Because right now, I think all the confidants, while they have cool stories, they're so disconnected from everything else. I yeah. would like to see the confidants and those side stories kind of start branching together and see what combinations and possibilities can come from that, be it upgraded skills like enhanced things or um, just completely brand new options for combat or buffs or things like that. And make it so the player actually has to choose which of these they have to go on and not that they can necessarily max out every confidant or yeah. these branching confidants or connected confidants in each playthrough. Like, give some sense of um, choice, like, that their choice matters. Let them finish mm. an entire story of these confidants, of all the confidants in the story, but in a single playthrough. But these more refined and kind of connecting paths maybe make where you can only do X so many per playthrough, I think would be right. an interesting way to continue to evolve confidence. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely agreeing with Scott here. Uh, like one of my favorite events in Persona 5 is the one in summer, like when you go fishing with Ryuji and Kawakami, Kawakami-sensei, uh, you don't see that much stuff like that, the characters and the side characters interacting with each other. Uh, it's definitely something that will do in the future. Uh, another thing I wanted to come back to is the uh, high school setting. I definitely think they could change that too, but it's kind of hard because like, it's, it's like the traditional setting of the series and plus Atlas is a Japanese company, so they tend to not change things, you know, so I'm, I'm not, I really want them to change it. And I'm sure some developers at the studio want to change it too, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen sadly. Well, I mean, that brings me to a good point because I wanted to ask you guys, like, what stuff from... The, I mean, we, we kind of got on the social links thing here, but what elements from the past games do you guys want to continue? Because personally, I don't want... I mean, I don't think you can call it a Persona game when it's not in the school setting because they all have been. So I, I definitely think that's going to come back. But that's something I also absolutely wouldn't want to see, like, changed either. Like, if right. they decided to... But you, I, I mean, I, don't, I think that can apply to either college or high school. I would be fine with it either way. Mm -hmm. But if they yeah. decide to completely mix up that aspect of it, I don't know how I would feel about it personally. Right. Uh, is there any other things from like that are core tenets of the series that you guys would absolutely like to see them continue to stick with, though? One thing I would um, like to see them bring hmm. back, and I think they only did it in Persona 1. They might have done it in 2. It's been a bit. I would like the to have party members like Persona users that you miss. Like... You could oh, pick yeah. up certain party members, but if you picked up X character, like it would look at lock out and you wouldn't be able to recruit Y character. I yeah, I, I would like that aspect because kind of going back to the join confidant idea, it gives each playthrough and the choices you make, I feel much more impact and it rewards replayability and expanding and exploring other avenues. Um, and yeah. that was just one aspect I really, really liked about Persona 1 and going back and replaying it because I could get X character because that's, because that's I didn't true. get the previous playthrough. That's one thing I would really yeah. like to, to see come back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I totally agree with Scott on that. I think, I think that'd be great. I think it also would address the issue that um, when you have those like late game characters like Naoto or Haru that come in so late so they don't get a lot of screen time compared to the other characters. I think creating that kind of system where you have your party set up in the beginning allows for that core party to actually get their screen time so they can have more time to interact with the other characters. You, you connect with them. Um, you know, from be the beginning of the game, you have the entire game to connect with them, and they all get their fair share. Because I think that was something that Persona One really excelled at. Like all mm -hmm. the characters were equally involved in the plot, and they all talked with each other. They all had their own like points, and it was really interesting. And then also, you know, 
added some great replayability because then you could go back, play it again, and try to pursue different characters, including like more hidden options. So mm -hmm. I would also love to see fusion spells come back, specifically yeah. like from Persona 2. Like, and Persona 4, I like the uh, Golden. I really like them as well. But I really, I just really like fusion spells from Persona 2. So I just love the idea of like these cool combination attacks like between party members and just it's it's so it's such a cool little like uh extra uh part of the, the the system and would love to see that um as for the high school setting i feel like i would love to see college as well but i think if you wanted to keep high school i think something that you could do is change the setting like the time period so maybe instead of doing modern why not kind of tackle a different time period in high school like Something that I would want to see personally is maybe like 1950s, uh, 60s Japan, kind of that period of rapid advancement before the Olympic Games. So that was like a huge period of time of like, you know, of that whole uh, old versus new and a lot of turmoil with students and, you know, going through that huge change in their, in their society and culture. And that would be an amazing theme to explore, you know, as well as a lot of racial tensions because a lot of mixed kids from World War II, you know, you could have some really great, like, mature themes to explore in that time period and still set it in high school with high school kids and, you know, keep that setting but, like, freshen it up with, like, something brand new as well. And bring Rido in because that I, I feel like Rido would yes. be perfect in that yes. setting. <laughs> um, but I, I'm curious... In regards to the high school, what would you guys think if the Persona cast were teachers in the high school? I like that. <laughs> I mean, it could definitely flip the formula on its head, kind of like we're talking about, where it's mm -hmm. you're sticking yeah. with the same general thing, but uh, a whole different perspective, it, different worries, but, yeah, concerns. Different perspective. Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I think that would be bizarre on atlas's part given how they've portrayed some of the teachers in some of the other installments <laughs> yeah. like persona, persona 4's teacher comes to mind specifically the guy who's calling who insults you the entire game oh <laughs> like they've always been shown i mean i i get that persona 5 has a couple different uh tastes on display when it, or a couple different characteristics with some of the uh -huh. teachers but all i i feel like most of the time they've been portrayed as like figures of authority more so than like actual friends or easygoing people and kamikami is like kind of one of the only people that bucks that trend that i can think of uh it'd be interesting mm -hmm. but it would definitely be it fly in the face of a lot of the past games as well yeah i think for me like a lot of what i love about persona is the fact that it does take place in like a contemporary time period because like especially compared to a lot of jrpgs they're usually sort of in like a fantasy setting or something like that it's like a completely different like sort of like breath of fresh air that i really enjoy about the city especially because it's so rooted in mm -hmm. japanese culture um i yeah. think for me one of the most interesting things i'd really like to see maybe in you know whatever they end up doing with persona 6 is um bringing back in persona 3 portable how they have the option of having a male and a female uh main character i think would be really interesting yeah. whether either they gave you the option to play as either a male or a female the whole way through or maybe if they had two protagonists and you kind of like switch between them i think that'd be interesting because as much as like i love persona 5 royal i do think at points the game kind of drags because you are playing as joker the whole time and you're having these relationships with these like characters throughout the whole game it might be interesting maybe to have two protagonists and then i think like Alyssa and scott said that could kind of change the dynamics a bit of the uh social links or the confidants because right. then maybe like with one protagonist you're getting to experience like one group of characters and then the other protagonist you're getting to have relationships with other you know another set of characters and then maybe they could like interweave and stuff like that um, but i think that would sort of maybe be an interesting uh direction if they decide to uh you know do that well that's kind of a larger talking point i wanted to kind of throw out there to all of you mm -hmm. how because especially since we've brought up uh like more replayable aspects, like it, it, different characters that you might not necessarily come across in one playthrough, but you would in another, or maybe different protagonists. How do you guys feel about a persona that is, that does, five feels very linear in a lot of senses, and like you can do New Game Plus and stuff like that, but the things you're really tacking on in those extra runs are like filling out your social links and things like that. How would you feel about a persona experience that is like maybe half as long as something like Persona 5? 
but so it only is like 70 hours twice. instead of 140. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, because Persona 5 is very linear, but it, it, it's very long, but it's also very linear. So if you replay it, I, I don't feel like you're gleaning anything drastically different, especially in regards to the story. Mm -hmm. um, so if they created a more replayable Persona style game, is that something that you guys would particularly yes. want? Or do you like how long and direct the storytelling is in something like 5? All I can say is, man, we want a hardcore as hell Persona <laughs> game, let me tell you. <laughs> Scott's over here like, man, I just need to replay this 100-hour RPG five different times. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I think that, that uh, like, I think, like, what you said, Logan, I think if it were shorter and allowed us to be a little bit more open with our choices and have to go through a couple playthroughs, I think it would uh kind of invigorate it to where like I, you would actually want to go especially for the you know trophy hunters um and trying to see everything um whereas with this like with the the previous games you can kind of just like see the what the world has or at least glimpse what the world has to offer um you know and, and, and try out each confidant whereas you know like especially if we do the different protagonist thing where separate protagonists get different social links i think that would be like do you just have two different experiences and i think that would be yeah. very uh a very cool aspect of it also yeah. shout out real quick to the original persona for having two completely different story routes you can do with totally oh, amazing final bosses quests locations it's just like i love that <laughs> you want to go this story or this story exactly and they even let up one into the other but now of course the characters would be like super overpowered for yeah. the main game <laughs> uh so each persona game, I, I think we've kind of touched on this a little bit too Alyssa specifically mentioned uh an idea for like a time period or some themes that they could play around with uh, each of the, at least everything, Persona 3, 4, and 5 specifically have some very specific themes or just ideas yeah. behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, and Persona 4 is more of a detective mystery style game, and 5 is like this gentleman thief uh, kind of buddy adventure or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Is there anything specific in that line that you'd like to see from 6? Uh, a specific theme that you can think of that you'd like them to play with? <laughs> You want them to bring back blowing out their personas out of their head with guns? <laughs> <laughs> I would like them... I would like in Persona 6 or a future one where the Persona cast loses like halfway through kind of like a Final Fantasy 6 style where the bad guy like wins and maybe like mm -hmm. the second half or the last quarter or third or whatever it's the team kind of re gathering back together and like okay we have to fix this maybe and you could play it on with the whole cocky kind of arrogant high schooler mentality it's like oh we're invincible we can't lose it's like we got this and then they don't got this and then things really get bad and they they lose or something i don't know but that would be really interesting to see come um, on High Scott, did you just did you just make Avengers Infinity War and Endgame in Persona? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like in my brain, I'm just realizing like, well, Thanos is yeah. the main. I was bad going guy more Final Persona Fantasy VI. Six style. Yeah. Than Avengers, like I do have an Avengers Endgame theme, but it's more like the other Persona <laughs> cast like make cameos and like they have to unite for some like super crazy demon crazy threat. But I'm going like Dude. just the high schoolers get cocky, they lose, they have to if... figure something out, mm -hmm. and then yeah. whether it's repent or climbing, like picking yourself back up, could be kind of the theme. Like you fall, well, pick yourself back up and keep going, press on, or I, I don't know. That would be interesting Dude, to me. I love where if the we... good guys lose before they win. If we get a portals moment in Persona Six where just like every single <laughs> Persona character comes out, with an ID coming out, oh, that would be great. I do think, <laughs> um, as far as like tying in, I mean, that's like a joke that you're making about tying in the mm -hmm. larger franchises. But I think, I think tying things back into the larger series a little bit would be something smart that they could do. Um, yeah. Because, especially because of the main through lines in all of the games have been like 
mainly Igor and stuff like that. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's, in, he's in all of them. Uh, but I feel like they've stopped playing around as much with the deeper lore involving those characters. And maybe they could dive into that a little bit more. I know the original games in the franchise really pr- played around with that. And I know that stuff is also not tied directly to Shin Megami Tensei, but it is more closely related to those kind of roots of the of the spinoff. Uh, so I, I think if they spent more time honing in on that stuff, it could maybe get a little too deep and not as accessible for some people because then they feel like, oh, I got to go back and play these PS1 era JRPGs now to totally understand what's <laughs> going on. So I understand that like an ex- a lot of accessibility would be potentially lost there, but I think it would be cool if they could find a way to largely tie in the games i don't know make the make the lines between each of them a little bit more obvious um mm-hmm. or make it feel like they yeah. are all taking place in the same universe which is always a given mm-hmm. I, obviously again a lot of same characters show up in all of the same games but it's never explicit um, mm-hmm. yeah. i know for a while yusuke i read or watched in the video that yusuke was originally supposed to like the idea behind him was he was a transfer student from i think um persona three high school like that was mm-hmm. they were going to go but they opted to just make him an art student instead mm-hmm. oh, okay. i think that was for the better i love you skate he's a best yeah me too uh, <laughs> i don't know we've touched on a lot of broad things again I know, i'm sure you all brought in a list of your own things uh i feel like we can kind of open it up at this point if there's anything specific each of you want to hone in on uh that you know you surely came in with uh in a general sense, what do you want to see from Persona 6 that I'm sure you have ideas for? So I think for me, it's just because uh, alongside, so uh, before I was before I started playing Persona 5 Royal, I've been starting the um, Yakuza series and I've been playing those. So I played the first three games in that series. I think it's just interesting seeing the parallels between those games because obviously they're like rooted, very heavily rooted in Japanese culture and like are, you know, designed to show you sort of like what city life is like in, in, uh, in, in Japan obviously fictional but like you know inspired by real life and so i think it's interesting that like with yakuza like you're exploring this sort of like dense city environment you have all these activities to do like you can go you know you can, you can go pl- uh, play all these games and and on all that so i think it'd be interesting with like persona because you have all the options of like hanging out with your friends going to you know they added like the the darts game pool like all that stuff so it'd be interesting maybe if they experimented a little more with like that interactivity like maybe in the activities that you can do where you can go i don't know like i guess rather than just going to the thing and be like okay you got points for playing pool with your friends like giving you sort of more to do in those cities and make the cities like feel a little more alive and i know like persona 5 royal especially like adds a ton of like different things you can do but i think maybe making the cities feel a little more alive and like you know expanding on what you can do in them i think might be interesting but also like i just have the yakuza on the brain lately so yeah right Maybe give give uh, Kiryu and uh, and Majima a cameo in uh, Persona. Have them show up as social links you can have. <laughs> have them show up as personas, man. Yeah, as personas. Yeah, like you Majima head, just Majima does comes crazy. out. <laughs> does a dance. <laughs> but um, for me, I, I also, as a big fan of you know the earlier Persona games, I would love to see some of that lore come back specifically like you know philemon and um you know the main antagonist from those first like three persona games i'm not even going to try to pronounce his name i never get it right (laughs) bring evil joker back (laughs) yeah exactly so so i would love to see that again because that, that there was kind of a little cliffhanger thing where he was essentially like that he's gonna return someday and it's like why don't we bring that back in again and then you know bringing in felamon because felamon is you know igor's master so you can easily tie that in and have him as like the main uh uh, person who you deal with and you know who introduces you to the uh persona like system and all that instead and 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 tie it back in with you know like you know that that earlier joker antagonist and it would be really cool and you could bring back some of the maybe have like a few cameos for like the persona one and two cast because even though it's a little complicated but there was kind of a split in in timelines but we do know that those characters exist in this timeline that three four and five are in 
so you could bring them back, have them awaken. It would be pretty cool. Like a nice mm-hmm. like shout out for people who are like old fans, but I feel like you could make it easily accessible too because it would be kind of like you would have to reintroduce all these characters again and kind of reestablish them as like, you know, as as players though. I think that'd be a good way to tie everything in. Yeah. Anybody else got any broad ideas? <laughs> I so uh, one of the best things about Persona is the music. You listen to Persona uh-huh. Three, Persona Four, Persona Five. Give us some like new music that people aren't like le- like Persona Five. We got acid jazz. Like we got we got this kind of not exactly mainstream uh, genre of music. Let's. I mean, personally for me, let's go some future funk. You know what I mean? Like let's let's get some, like. <laughs> anime ass sounding guys in the background and just like it, it still got that jazzy theme kind of mix Persona 4 and 5's music together and just ah, make it great make oh, a crazy. great little soundtrack <laughs> let's just do a music screamo kind of... scout soundtrack just screamo dude if we just get like <laughs> August Burns Red for the next Persona <laughs> <laughs> I mean, personally, to jump in here, I, I know Ian, or Ian, you want to talk? I know you were about to mention something to say. Uh, yeah, so I have multiple ideas that I'd like to I'd like to see. Uh, basically, what, what I want with uh, future Persona games is to is for Atlas to keep the the tradition and keep what they're doing, but to try and do it do it more um, with more ambition and with more like with more budget because like. When you think about it, Persona 5, like, uh, first released in 2016. And uh, so they've been, it was in development for a pretty long while. And I think it was before they got bought over by Sega and stuff. So what I want to see now is to, is to see what Atlas could do with more, with more, like, with more leeway and with more power. And for example, I'm sure that there are plenty of ideas they want to do, but they can't do for budget reasons or for other reasons, like a right. female protagonist. Like if you check the the Persona 5 art book, you can see there are some some drafts for some rough drafts for a female protagonist, but it didn't make the cut. Uh, it's the kind of stuff they definitely want to do, and and I think it's, it'll be a good it'd be good too because a lot of people like. Like uh, I won't say Atlas is like my favorite game studio e- either, e- either. But like a, a lot of a lot of people get, give them some some like they're pretty mean. Like I hey, Atlas never wants to do female protagonists. I still they want to do it, but they just can't, you know. And uh, uh, so, that's the kind of thing I want to I want to see them do. And right. another thing another thing that's definitely come around is uh, like uh, when they do the cast of the characters, I always keep like some of the same stereotypes like i wouldn't say um yosuke and, and, and yuji in, in persona 5 and persona 5 uh, in persona 4 and 5 uh as the same character but you know they're slightly similar but at the same time they have their own like they have their own personality i'm not i'm not sure to explain that because uh, at, at the beginning they feel like you think ah oh, they, they are the comedy reliefs they are the idiots like kind of guys but you can see they're they're pretty nice and they have a lot of depth in their personality so what's what personal what persona is good at is making characters seem stereotypical then then you you realize it's not the case at all and that's one of the things i want to i want to see again in the for future games um another thing is like the battle system i'm i'm pretty sure like uh they're going to keep like turn, the turn-based battle system uh again i'm not like some kind of old school gamer i action rpg sucks i like i, I like turn-based uh, or nothing i'm not the kind of gamer like that but i definitely would love to keep the the weakness battle system as a series and another another thing you like is each game so far has a mascot like character and Persona 4 has, has a Kuma, a Teddy, Persona 5 has Morgana, uh, but for Persona 6, Persona 6, I'm not sure they're going to do that again because uh, one idea I have is that when you think about it, Persona 5, Morgana in Persona 5 is voiced by uh, uh, Ikue, Ikue Otani, which is the voice of Pikachu, and she's like the the best voice ever you can get for a mascot character. So now that they picked her out, I don't think they're going to 
to do the mascot thing again. So I'm pretty sure they're going to change that and and go for a, for a key character instead, like like EG Singh, Persona mm-hmm. Free, that kind of character they're going to do instead of a mascot like animal character. They're leaving too much money on the table though if they don't do a mascot. Because yeah, of all the merchandise <laughs> sells itself. Who will take uh, into a car? I mean, <laughs> I mean well, really do a human. Cat. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, we just, too, like. <laughs> oh, God. We brought up some things I know we definitely haven't talked about, namely gameplay. I feel like because um, mm-hmm. gameplay is very similar throughout the, the the series. I feel like I've been trying to think of ways that they could improve on what was introduced in Five. I think uh, the biggest complaint I have about Five's gameplay is not even uh, the general structure of it personally but i mean before we went live here uh with this panel we were kind of talking amongst ourselves and it's just kind of how the gameplay how they integrate it with certain boss fights and things like that aren't always great especially in persona 5 in particular there are a few boss yeah. fights in the game that are not <laughs> ideal by any means yeah um, and i think it's just yeah. trying to find a way to uh adapt the gameplay system they that they already have um, which I think largely works very well in just doing more interesting things with it, especially in the realm of bosses. Um, but again, bosses are so yeah. few and far between in those games. Um, yeah. That I don't think it's ever like it's not that it's not that huge of an issue. But if they could find some more creative things to do with the bosses in Persona Six, yeah. that would be great. Um, I think personally too, I to go on with. Uh, I know I never answered the broad question. I think if they, this is a bold thing, and I don't know if if Atlas would do this by any means, but I think if they took the setting out of Japan, they could do some very interesting things. Because I'm, I, when I think about what they could do with Persona Six, I feel like they've kind of covered the different areas of, uh, especially in three, four, and five. Mm-hmm. Like four, you had or three, you had like a boarding school. Four, you had a high school in a small town. And then right. five had a high school in an inner city. And I'm trying to think about what they adapt and do next. And I really can't think of how they, again, I'm not super intimately familiar with Japan's school structure, but I can't think of how they mix that up again to make it feel fresh once again. Yeah. I think the freshest thing they could do is just throw it in a completely different country or something like that. Like maybe make you a Japanese student who again is transferring to another school, but you're transferring out of country or something like that. And uh, I don't know. Put it in America. I'm, I just, I'm an American oh, guy. I just put my picture, picture like, in America. Chuck Stonewaller, <laughs> Dallas football player, quarterback, <laughs> always wears a cowboy hat. I mean, You're not one of them JRPG characters, are you? To Logan's point, I think like you know, obviously, like there's that section of Persona Five where you go to Hawaii for a little bit. So like maybe they could experiment with something like that. Like maybe if it's only like for a section of the game, like taking you to other parts of the world or something like that mm-hmm. might be interesting, just to like give some diversity. Because yeah, I mean, like I love I love the fact that the Persona series is so like Japanese culture focused. But I think it would be interesting maybe to see how they adapt that to like either another culture or another setting yeah. or something like that. So yeah, I mean that's that's something they could they could definitely do. I guess make your Persona Six protagonist homeschool. There you go. <laughs> there you go. The Perfect. Next, Online learning. <laughs> it's, it's it's the yeah, age it's, of <laughs> COVID and personal <laughs> learning. Persona users turn into the digi destined. So. Oh my god. Oh, no. <laughs> really? No. Mega Man oh god, are they basically really? <laughs> just digital persona users? The dream. The dream. Digimon and digital personas. <laughs> So I know we've only got about 10 or 15 minutes left here. So there are a few other uh, rapid fire things I did want to run through. Ian brought up one, which I wanted to kind of pose to everybody, is that obviously Persona 6 is going to, unless they pull up Persona 5 and put it on last gen hardware for some reason, which I don't envision happening. Uh, it's going to be next gen. It's going to probably be on PS5, which means they can do some new things with the hardware. As of when we're recording this, we still have not seen a lot of games in action on the new hardware. So we don't have great ideas of what they can do with the new hardware uh just some broad ideas i feel like but i mean Mm -hmm. mixed with combined with the fact that we're about to jump to a next a new generation of game consoles plus as ian also said uh alice has way more money now to spend because uh, persona is now a breadwinner for sega and they uh, belong to sega now so they've got more money to pull from uh is there anything, mm-hmm. a sort of grander idea that you can think of for Persona that you would uh, want them to do? I think the voice acting is the most notable thing, just making the game fully voiced in every single instance, which would take 
a lot of time, but uh, they assumedly have the time and money to make something like that work in the future, I think. Uh, any anything yeah. anything broad that you can think of that they can now do with more money and more resources and time? Um, for me, I think, and this is kind of going back to a, a point I had made before about the social link, but I think in general, because, you know, we're already dealing with stronger hardware and it's going to get stronger now, um, they can afford to integrate things way more. Like instead of kind of having a very separate sort of formulaic thing where like everything's completely separate, like the social links are separate from the main plot and the schedule, school schedule is separate from the story beats. And the decisions you make, you know, outside of those story beats are separate from that. Why not integrate everything together? So it's all this kind of like, uh, um, like all these choices that you make are significant. Like choices you may make and how you spend your time affect how the plot may unfold. Uh, the choices you make on what uh, people you spend time with, how you develop them and their storylines and the personalities have a major impact on how they behave in the main plot. Like if you have, let's say, for instance, you reverse a social link that has a direct negative impact on how the story, you know, may unfold later on when it starts getting focused on them. Like there, there's a lot of cool things that I feel like you could do if you integrated things more, made those choices feel like they have more weight. And the hardware, I think, would support that pretty easily. You know, we don't, yeah. we're not on like PS2 hardware where you have to separate things because you know, everything was kind of weak. Now you can have that kind of thing on going and on run, like, you know, and running in the background where the game actually keeps track of these. Things. And we've seen other games do it too, you know? So it'd be really great, you know, to see Atlas get ambitious about that as well and like do that. Um, I also feel like in the gameplay, I feel like it'd be really interesting if they changed uh, it up from the one more system I feel like that they've kind of stretched it as far as they could. So I would love to see them kind of develop like a new sort of turn-based combat system. Maybe something a little closer to like the press turn system. Because press turn is so like malleable. There's so many cool things you can do with it. And it's so precise strategically. And I think that would also address a lot of the boss imbalances that I think you get. Because the one more system is so like... Uh, a wishy-washy at times so the mechanics kind of mess up a little bit I've noticed but I think you know if they spent the time to rebuilding a new battle system that was more precise and allowed for even more strategic depth I think that would be a great payoff as well press turn for those that haven't played SMT the mainline games it's their version of kind of the once more where if you hit an enemy with their weakness it adds an additional turn to your pool basically so yeah and then you have the option as well like if you want to pass a turn mm -hmm. over to other party members you can do that so you can actually change the turn order of your um of your party members if you feel like you need to actually follow up with this kind of attack or i need to heal right now so let me pass it to my healer instead and you can kind of customize it that way too and it's, it allows for a lot of really cool uh, um customization like strategy options that you don't have so much in one more system for sure anybody else have any wide-ranging ideas for next gen style persona I, I think the only thing I guess I would be interested to see, like, just because with so many other, like, JRPG sort of series, like, you know, we saw a Final Fantasy VII remake and uh, Dragon Quest XI did this too, I guess, you know, transitioning more like an action RPG style thing. So I guess it'd be interesting maybe to see, like, if Persona 6, like, if they did go in that direction. I don't know if I necessarily want that because I do like the turn-based combat of Persona. Like, I think it stands out compared to, like, every mm -hmm. other series kind of transitioning and thing. But I think it would be interesting, I guess, if they, especially with... Um, Persona 5 Scramble coming out, which I know is like slightly different because is it's it like coming a, you know, out? I hope yeah. it's actually, um, I mean, it's out somewhere, you know. But I mean? yeah, um, but yeah, I think with that, like you know, being more of an action game, like maybe it would be interesting to see like what a sort of Persona action RPG style th thing would look like, just because you know, granted, like every other sort of RPG like that is sort of transitioning to that style of combat. Yeah, I think especially I think to get the attention of like Western audiences too. I think with the power of the Series X and the PlayStation 5 or PCs at the time, I think they'll finally be able to incorporate a uh, a green color scheme. I think the color will be green. 
I think there I will be enough power. Uh, I mean, <laughs> PS2, it was buckling under the blue and yellow color color <laughs> motifs. I think PS4, they pushed it even further with the red. I think with this next generation, they can finally hit green. I'm on board with orange. This is what I'm backing for the official <laughs> color of sticks. I want orange. I my, my, my theory is purple because they've done all the primary colors, and if you mix them all together, you get purple. But wasn't purple <laughs> the color scheme for Persona Q, though? Well, the red was the, one, was the scheme for Persona 2, so they reused that. <laughs> there you go. I'm on I'm board go, with the orange train. I'm going with pink. I feel like we need to get bold. You know, mm. I think... A nice millennial, a nice millennial pink in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think salmon. Let's go salmon. The last. <laughs> oh, there we go. Fancy. The last thing I wanted to throw in there, uh, and I know this isn't even anything that would require next gen hardware or anything like that, but the PC version of Persona Four Golden, they threw in the dual audio, which was great, and I don't know why yeah. they haven't done that for the other ones. Uh, again. I, someone like Ian, I'm gonna guess you would prefer to play in Japanese audio. Yeah, I mean, you already, play, you already play these games when they come out in Japan anyway. You've already been playing Scramble, so uh, I'm sure you would be totally fine with the dual audio. I would love, love to turn on the Japanese option. But a uh, few last second things we're gonna run through here quickly before we gotta wrap up the panel. Uh, would you like to see an expanded version come out after Persona 6 proper comes out, or do we want to finally buck this trend and just stop with it? Get rid of it. I think it's End gonna it. I think it's gonna happen inevitably. I think it's gonna happen to you. Like yeah. But Go back to it. the duology <laughs> format. Split it into literally two games. That'd be cool. Yeah. True. It would be. Uh, uh, I'm talking the next version again. Yeah. <laughs> Not spending 18 euros, like when you convert yen to euros, it gets really expensive Japanese games. I'm not buying Persona 6 Royale again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, remakes. Would we like to see any other Persona remakes come before Persona 6? Or do you guys want to, is the next big Persona thing you guys want to see other than Scramble coming west, which it probably will? Uh, would you like to see remakes of the older games before we get to Persona 6, or do you just want, hope the next big thing they announce at the series is 6 proper? Yes. Scott, you're shaking oh. your head. What do you yeah. want to see? Three remake? I, I feel no, like that's I want, thing I legit I want. want people to realize that Persona existed before Persona 3. Yes. I, mm. I want people to play Persona 1 and the 2 duology. Um, even if it's just PC ports... I mean that I would be thrilled with PC ports of those. Yeah. But like a slightly more modernized version or like a remaster or enhanced remake of Persona One and Two, I would kill for those because they are games that deserve people to play them. And now that Persona is a bigger series, I think they should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Persona existed before Three. It All did. Persona <laughs> three is Persona one. Uh, Persona yeah. four is it's like square <laughs> level I agree. of renumbering. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree had... wholeheartedly. Where I I think they're super inaccessible. And as somebody who does love the series and did go back to three, yeah, when I had the P I had Golden on the PS Vita. I went back to three, and I was like, oh, okay, like this is like interesting, different take on this. And I just mm -hmm. give me all the Persona. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> make it more accessible. Yeah, because yeah. the, uh, the previous uh, ones were excellent. Remix, remix of Persona 2, like joining the two games together into a single remake would be pretty nice. Yeah. Um, if I remember, if I remember correctly, um, uh, the, the male protagonist in Persona 2, uh, his name is Tatsuya, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, it wasn't the. Uh, like I'm pretty sure I heard about I heard that from a friend and also like wasn't it like one of the actually one of the first games where you could where you could that date other guys as a male protagonist? Yeah. You could actually pick um because you had a choice to as a love interest, uh Maya, yeah. um uh Lisa Silverman or uh June. And so June was the male option. So that was the fir that was the first one I know of they definitely did with um S and T series. Uh, so that was a big thing. I, I like this to come back to come back to to so that way people will realize like Atlas like like isn't maybe the way you think it is like I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah. Even if, and I, it, I think I think full blown remakes aren't even needed either. Like, bring them a PC. Like, we have to. It's it's insane that the easiest way to play all the Persona games, other than five or even five, I guess you can play through through your Vita. Uh, all mm -hmm. the games are on Vita in some way, and we need to start bringing them over to PC at least, kind of like they did with Golden. I agree. I Re smart. Remake them exclusively for Vita. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a wild thing. Vita lives. <laughs> very last question here, and very quickly, and then we're gonna wrap up. Uh, because speaking of PC, any likelihood they bring Persona 6 to anything other than PS5? Will the Switch crowd finally yes. be satiated? Uh, will the PC crowd find... Are they, are they going to start doing more multi-platform releases? Heck, even Phil Spencer has been way more active in Japan over the past five years. Maybe when 6 comes around, it'll be on Xbox hardware too. Do you guys see it releasing on anything other than PS5 in the future? PC. Well, I think... Definitely yeah, PC. I think PC. Because we've already seen like... They've seen how successful Golden was, and that's an old game. They do it on yeah. PC, and it sold phenomenally. And they even said later on, like, because of the success of Persona 4 Golden on PC, now it's actually making them re-examine those policies, and they're going to look into either, like, reporting games, like older games, and putting new games on that, at least that platform as well. So I definitely think there's a great chance of it. More money on the table. They should do it. And again, <laughs> again, now that they're tied with Sega, I mean, you would imagine Sega's smart enough to maybe push them in that direction a little bit more. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, Porting to Switch cool. and PC, like, they would just make money. Print it money. would just print money. It would. Mm -hmm. It would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, and 5 already did pretty well on its own, just on PS4. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, even yeah. just preserving the the games in general, you know, like to to pr preserve that moment in gaming, to port them to Switch, to port them to PC, like this is how the Persona games were before, you know, you the ones you know, three, four, and five, you know. And, yeah. And kind of. Yeah. I agree. That. Well, cool. That has been uh, our panel here for Persona Six. Obviously, we've talked for part of an hour about everything we'd love to see in a future installment uh to be totally honest i'm not really sure how we're going to be able to interact with those of you out there who might be watching this panel but we will be posting this on our website on dualshockers.com mm -hmm. the day it goes live so if you're watching this as it occurs with packs online come over and interact with us over at dualshockers.com we'll probably be in the comments talking to some people uh, you can also interact with us over on twitter at dualshockers you can also chat with all of us on our own twitter accounts or follow us there if you would like to as well uh, yeah. I'll let everybody sound off with their own Twitter accounts. I am at more man 12. Scott, where are you at? At solid snake one, two, zero. Ryan. Uh, just my name at Ryan Meitzler. Nick. At shotgun McPain. Uh, Lissa. <laughs> at a James three, four, seven. And Ian. Uh, mine is at a uh, underscore Ian zero seven. There you go. So if you want to talk to us over on Twitter and tell us what we got right or what we got wrong in this panel, feel free to. <laughs> uh, other than that, the only other thing I would say to look out for is uh, we here at Dual Shockers do have another panel coming up uh, with PAX Online. Uh, we will be talking about the 10. We'll be making a list of the 10 games we would want to see on the N64 Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that will be coming up here in the schedule. So if you want to watch more of our staff discuss that topic, you can look in the PAX Online schedule and see when that will be airing. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us here for this, and uh, we hope that you have a good remainder of your day or your week. So take care. <laughs>